One of my favorite parts about TFT by far is how many different ways a unit can be strong. Even in the same tier of unit, right? We're looking at one cost today. It's super easy for one unit to be crazy strong because it's just, you know, out here swinging and doing a billion damage. While another unit's really strong because it just leads you into the right things, holds items very well. And that's really cool to me. There's there's all kinds of different factors determining, you know, when it's right to hold a certain unit on stage one, when it's right to, you know, maybe reroll a certain unit. And that's what adds to the complexity of TFT. It makes it such a deep and, and pretty cool game. So today we're going to talk about one cost and we're going to talk about, you know, some of the things that you should be looking for when you're deciding whether or not you think a one cost is good. This is really good for like the beginning of a set, uh, even like deeper into a set, right? If you're maybe you're struggling a lot on stage two, it might just be that you're holding the wrong units for your situation. So hopefully this will help shore that up a little bit. So also, uh, if you do subscribe, it really supports the channel. So I would appreciate it if you are not subscribed. So let's get into it. Uh, first and foremost, I think the most obvious way you can be strong is just pure power, right? So I think the best example of a really strong one cost in the current set, at least, is Darius, this guy right here. I just have these up so we can reference him a little bit if we want to. It's supposed to just be a conversation, but um, so Darius, the reason why he's so good one of the reasons why he's so good, because he's probably the best one cost in the set, and we'll, you know, get to why that is. But the very first reason why he's so good is that he just does a ton of damage, man. He is super, he's like pretty tanky, I don't want to say super tanky, but he's pretty tanky. He just pumps out damage. You know, he's a one cost that feels me like a two cost in terms of how much damage he can actually put out when how good he is in a fight. And that's a great thing for Darius, right? I think a, a counter to this is like, you know, I, I think Caitlyn and, and Kog'Maw are two examples of units that kind of struggle in fights without a lot of support. Right? If you put a Kogma 1 on a board versus a Darius 1, it's not really going to be close who wins, right? If you put a Darius 1 versus any of these units on a board in a 1v1, Darius will pretty much always win that. And that's the very first thing I think that can make a unit strong, uh, particularly at one cost, right? It's just how good on its own is it on a board. TFTs will never be played in a vacuum, but it is important to have an understanding of just like, you know, the raw value of a unit. So the second thing I want to talk about, which is also a very important part of what can make a unit good in TFT, is how well they hold items and so and also like like how effectively they hold items for things that you want to play later in the game right so i think a good example of this is sivir sivir right here right she's a story weaver trick shot she is a very 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 good item holder for ad units because she holds last whisper really well right she holds ie pretty well she holds death blade really well she can hold gs a giant slayer for me who doesn't know what GS stands for? Um, she can hold, we can look at some items, right? Like there's so many different items that she can hold down here. Gumblade, Giant Slayer, Deathblade, Infinity Edge, maybe not a BT, you know, like Edge of Night even, Runans. You can slam a lot of different things on her that lead into some pretty good things as well, right? She wants to lead into some of those four cost AD item holders. And the beauty of it, right? Is that it's very, very easy for her to transition into some of those four cost item holders. So. Sivir is a Story Weaver trick shot, right? You're holding Story Weavers, you're holding trick shots. Uh, particularly, you're pulling stuff like like Teemo. Maybe you hit a, a lucky Zaya on like seven or eight. You're holding a Zaya before you're rolled down. You're holding like Galios. You're holding Brawlers, right? With the Story Weaver stuff. And one of the most meta boards right now is just Kaisa with four trick shot and a bunch of Brawlers. So because in Kaisa is just an Ink Shadow trick shot, right? You don't even care about the Ink Shadow part, just the trick shot part. So you can kind of pretty one to one just like play Sivir get to eight, have her hold all your AD items, move over to Kai'Sa if you hit Kai'Sa too, and then just, you know, keep a lot of the same units on the board as well. Um, you can say like, okay, well, I have this Sivir with three attack items, or three, you know, three AD items, and I have this Brawler front line, and it's such a seamless transition. Uh, and that's one of the things that makes Sivir such a good unit, right? I think an example of, of a slightly more awkward transition uh, can maybe be something along the lines of like, <laughs> I hate, I hate doing this to Kog'Maw, but I feel like Kog'Maw is a, a much more awkward transition because right now Lilia isn't very good, right? Kog'Maw has a very natural transition to Lilia technically, right? Maybe they both want blue buff, they both want AP, they both are mythic, whatever. But you kind of have to like finagle your way into Faded right now if you're playing around a Kog'Maw early game because sure, he holds like blue buff and AP well, but Lilia is not very good. And so you have to kind of you know, you have to play around the meta in some way. So while he does hold those items really well, it is a much more awkward transition than Sivir where you're not really holding the right units, right? If you're playing on Kog'Maw, you're probably holding like stuff like Melfight and Nico, and, you know, maybe you're playing around like TK, Mr. Tom Kench, for anyone who does not know what TK is. Uh, you know, stuff that doesn't really want to be on a Syndra board quite so much. And so it's a much more awkward transition. You totally, totally can try to play Lilia if you want. It can work out. I'm not going to stop you. Go for it. 
But as I say, to play into the more meta lines, Kong One becomes a much more difficult unit to play around, right? Where like Ari, for example, uh, I mean, even look at like, and this is cheating because it's a two cost, but like Ari and Kindred, right? Our two early game units, just to prove the point, our two early game units that like really naturally transition into Syndra because you're holding all the right units. When you play Ari, you can really naturally hold Thresh and Yasuo, not that you're playing Yasuo forever, but you know, like Yasuo and, uh, and Kindred and, you know, the Dryad units that go along with Kindred and just really naturally get into that like Dryad Syndra board that's so good right now. Um, so that's to say that a lot of what can make a unit strong is how well it holds items, but also how well it holds items for the things that it wants to get into. How, right, like, how well it holds items for things that are actually good in the meta currently. Now, uh, I think maybe the last thing I want to talk about in terms of what makes one cost really strong is... Actually, we can talk about Darius for a second too, because he's a, he's a great example actually of that, that whole concept. Uh, we're going to talk him at each interval of this. Where, so Darius, right? He wants to play it into a lot of uh, heavenly boards, a lot of like Lee Sin carry, a lot of Kane carry. You can totally carry, like, you know, you could probably play him into Yone carry. People did for a bit when Yone was good. Less so now, because Yone is not so good anymore. But he naturally holds BT super well, Edge of Night super well, Titan super well, Hodge super well. Where is Hodge? Right here, Hand of Justice super well, right? All these items that these, these big four costs want to hold, he holds them super well for a super long time. And you can just play the heavenly board around him and just really seamlessly transition into these four costs that you really want to play around. So he's another great example of a unit that is just super good at this whole, uh, you know, play into like, like hold items and play into the play into your your eventual board type thing. Um, so the last thing that I was getting at is that you also really want to keep note of how good the units that you can play around these units are. And so what that means is that, you know, what makes Sivir strong isn't necessarily just that she holds items well, that she does a decent amount of damage. She's a decent unit in a vacuum, right? Um, and that she like leads in a Kaisa very, very well. It's that she also plays some really strong units around her, right? Uh, the whole Storyweaver package, right? Stuff like um, Riven with Zyra and maybe you play some like um, ghost units with that by using Garen to get into a Lowie or Riven to get into uh, Aatrox. There's just so many different variations and it's so easy to hit things and make your board stronger naturally, right? If you're playing around Sivir, you're hitting an upgrade or like something that you can potentially play around almost every turn, I would say, uh, you know, in through stage two and stage three. There's like something to consider where, you know, if you're playing a unit like, let's say you have a bunch of items on like a Kha'Zix, right? Maybe you can hit some heavenly units, sure. It, nothing's like really doing a ton for the board. Maybe you get really lucky like an early cane to get four Reaper in, otherwise you're set two Reaper the whole game. I think Jax can be something like this too, where like if you have Ink Shadow stuff already, if you have the early Senna, then Jax can be okay, but you kind of really need items for the Jax, or like your tank items for the Jax, or more so like you need like items for the Senna and like items for like an Alawi or something that's a real tank, not Jax. He's more of a synergy bot, right? But let's say that Jax, the stuff you play around Jax is a lot harder to hit and a lot more situational and just more awkward, I'd say, than something like Sivir or like Darius again. All you have to do is play. It's so easy to hit a duelist. Yana exists, Yasuo exists, um, you know, all these heavenly units exist, early Umbral units exist in the form of Yorick. There's like so many ways to play around this unit early game that he's another great example of a unit that is just like, there's a bunch of good stuff to play around him. I think Rek'Sai is a good example of one that's like a little bit, she's pretty generic. Uh, she, she's like decent and she is a pretty generic frontline unit that has some decent hits because Brawler is so omnipresent, right? A bruiser, excuse me. Riven's a two cost bruiser. Kobuko is another one cost bruiser. Uh, you can play TK if you hit that, right? Aatrox as well as another two cost bruiser and leads you into all the ghostly stuff. So there's like decent stuff to play around Rek'Sai is just like a bruiser synergy bot. But you know, the Dryad part's a little more awkward. You can play around Kindred a bit. Uh, a lot of the connecting pieces between like Kindred and Ghostly are later down in the synergies, right? With like Orin and, or rather Dryad and Ghostly, like with like Orin with Shen and like Kane with the, the um, what's her face, Kindred. So a little bit harder to play this unit early game. I, you can't see my hand. My hand is like pointing at Rek'Sai right now. <laughs> but that is to say that like, you know, Units that can very naturally play good units around them and can very naturally find a lot of different upgrades and have a lot of different board variations to hit are better, right? So, so far, three things that make units strong. One, just how strong they are in a vacuum, right? How hard do they pump? Two, how good are the units you can play around them? This is actually the third point, but uh, how good are the units you can play around them? Um, how easy is it to hit upgrades? How easy is it to get stronger over the course of the game? And three, how well do they hold items? And particularly how well do they hold items for whatever it is you're trying to play later in the game? right and i think uh 
I mean, I, you can see by, by me saying this that Darius is like the total package. So if you're looking for the best one cost in the game right now, it is Darius and it is not even close. It is not even remotely close, right? Uh, <laughs> he is far and away the best one cost in set 11. I think there have been, I don't know if there's actually ever been a one cost that's like this much better than every other one cost. I, I, I'm sure there has been. I can't think of one right now, but um, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. And I think this is also, I'll leave you with this last little point because I think it is really important to remember is that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we can, you can have a tier list of one cost in your mind and you should have an idea of how, you know, good, how, how well uh, one cost to do according to the criteria we just talked about. But even more than that, it's important to just have an idea of how strong you can be in the moment and what you have items for immediately. So, you know, we talked about how maybe Kog'Maw can be an underwhelming unit, but if you have Kog'Maw 2 in a, you know, in a tier and a rod and a, and a sword opener and you can go like Shoujin rod, uh, Kog'Maw 2 on 2 1 with some frontline, that's totally fine. Maybe you get to go to 8 really easily, maybe you get to go to 9 really easily, you get to play a stronger early game with some tempo. That's totally fine, right? Even though Kog'Maw might be a worse unit in your mind, it's still okay to play them. And that's maybe the, again, the, the biggest takeaway from this is that the best one cost at the end of the day is going to be whatever one you have the tools to play around. But you should, generally speaking, on stage 1, try to hold the units that are a little better in general, right? That that match, match those criteria better. But always keep in mind that you should be holding things you have items for, you should be holding things that you have units to play around, and that's what's really gonna make you find an edge on stage one. Okay, stage two, but like, really you're, you're playing stage one to get an edge on stage two. You know what I mean. Anyways, that was one cost. I'll be back tomorrow with maybe some more lore stuff, but until then, peace, bye-bye, thank you for watching.